Hey, Dr. Fauci, very nice of you to, to take the time to join us. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank, thank you for having me. It's uh, been a good day. Uh, I got vaccinated today and I actually feel fine. So, so I saw that moment where you were getting vaccinated and, and you know, we've seen this kind of parade, right, of high ranking officials doing just that, right up to the vice president, Mike Pence, getting his shot just a few days ago. But, but I can't help but wonder, where's President Trump in all of this? Well, you know, I think he is not getting vaccinated now because he received monoclonal antibody when he was infected with SARS-CoV-2, which is a large amount of antibody that they infuse in you passively transferring the antibody. The recommendation is that if you have a high level of antibody as a result of the passive transfusion, it would interfere with the ability of the vaccine to induce a good response. And so right now the recommendation is to wait 90 days from the time you've gotten the infusion. I believe that that's the reason why he is not getting vaccinated now. Has Donald Trump signaled to you that he has a desire to get vaccinated as soon as possible? I haven't had that kind of a conversation. I haven't spoken to the president uh, since he was in Walter Reed uh, at the time that he was ill with, with uh, SARS-CoV-2. I have not discussed with him the subject of his getting vaccinated. Is that something that you plan to discuss in the near future? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's unpredictable when the president wants to talk to you or not. It's not one of those things that's a, a regular meeting we have. Haven't spoken to him in a while. But uh, if he wants to speak to me, I'm always happy to speak to him and give him any advice that we'd like. The, uh, I want to ask you about the UK mutation. And, and you know, we, we call it that, except, of course, it's had months to spread. And so what I'm wondering is how likely is it in your mind that it is already in Canada, already in the United States? I would not be surprised that if it already is at low levels in other countries that have not yet detected it, including Canada, including the United States. Can't say for sure, but I would not be surprised. But how worrying is that? Because, I, you know, in, in Canada, there is a, a ban on incoming flights from the UK. And my understanding is that the US hasn't followed suit in that front. And I'm just wondering, what, what is the rationale here? It's suggestive that given the rate of spread in the UK, that this mutation might be responsible for the increased spread, which means it increases the transmissibility of the virus. That could be true. We're going to assume that it is. What we know it doesn't do, it does not appear to increase the virulence of the virus, namely making it a more serious or deadly virus. And it doesn't appear at all to interfere with the protective effect of a vaccine. So those are the things we'll continue to follow. But, uh, but my so approach I, to this is follow it very carefully, get as much information as you possibly can, but don't overreact to it. But at the same time, more transmission does equal more death. And so if I'm looking at the situation and I'm thinking, OK, this this seems like it's only going to get worse until, as you point out, there is sort of a meaningful uptake of the vaccine. OK, but then, you know, depending on the survey that you look at, I mean, up to what, half of Americans are either uncertain about or hesitant or, or altogether unwilling to get vaccinated. So so how does this pandemic ever end? You know, I believe and I have some cautious optimism that given the high degree of efficacy of this vaccine and the fact that it is safe and as more and more people get vaccinated, its safety is going to become even more apparent that those people who are skeptical and reluctant will come around. Well, I think as the time goes by, more and more people would be convinced of the advantage of protecting yourself your family, and ultimately the community. So I'm cautiously optimistic that as more vaccine is rolled out, we're going to do better and better. We've already seen millions of Americans ignore health warnings and opt to travel to see loved ones this holiday season. I mean, what, what does that tell you about the, the extent to which Americans are, are willing to, to take this pandemic seriously? 
what we're seeing now is that when you look at the airport travel, that we're having more travel now than we've had throughout any time in the pandemic. That is of concern to me. We don't want to cancel Christmas, but we're at a critical time here in the United States. We have deaths that break records almost every day. We have numbers of hospitalization well over 100,000, 118,000 the last time we looked, 200,000 new infections a day. It's a very serious situation. And yet, as you said, people still seem in some respects, not all people, but some, to ignore the recommendations that we make from a public health standpoint. We will see the result of that a few weeks following the end of the Christmas holiday. And that could be a pretty dark January if we don't adhere to these public health measures. So, so then what is the point at which you, you set aside what you called a sort of cautious optimism in place of something a little stricter and a little more aggressive, maybe even perhaps on a national scale? I mean, does, does the incoming Biden administration allow you to push the envelope a little bit in what you're willing to mandate? So one of the things that I would hope we could do and I would recommend is have much more guidance from the federal government and assistance to the states in getting things done in a uniform, consistent way, as opposed to some states even still acting as if there's no problem, acting as if this is a hoax or if it's fake news. We see examples of that, not the governors or, or the or the, or the mayors, but people in a certain state here versus there think that it isn't really a problem when the numbers and the data tell you very clearly that we're dealing with a very, very serious problem that we have to address by pulling together in the same direction. I have time for, for one last question for you, and it's sure. about what happens two days from now. So Christmas Eve, of course, but I also understand it is your birthday. And so I suppose this, this allows you to, to wrap a, a Christmas wish and your birthday wish all in one. So let's hear it. What is it? My birthday and Christmas wish is that within a reasonable period of time over the next several months, we can essentially crush this outbreak. Dr. Fauci, I hope we have many more opportunities to speak again and happy birthday. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it.